The information presented on this program is not intended to take the place of your personal physician's advice, and it is not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. Discuss this information with your own physician or healthcare provider to determine what is right for you. Here to help us, Dr. Joe Esposito, who is a pain management specialist. Dr. Oz himself has been nice enough to call him. Joe came on. He was a wonderful guest. Dr. Joe Esposito. Yeah, I got rid of Google after meeting Joe. You know, he's got yeah. yeah. like <laughs> knowledge. There's so much research out there. And so many of you don't know that there's something you can do to get yourself well. So why would you take the risk of putting something in your body that might cause some real serious neurological damage? And that's where the problems come in. And that's why we do this show. The best health and wellness show in the world. Stop suffering needlessly. Every day, patients come in our office and say, Dr. Joe, why didn't I do this sooner? And my answer is, I don't know. Hey folks, Dr. Joe here. So glad you could be with us today. So, fun topic today. If you've listened to the show in the past, you know that I, I, I don't eat meat. I'm a, I eat a plant-based diet and been doing that for about 34, 33, 34 years now. And so I was cool before it was cool, which is kind of cool. And so Garrett decided, a couple of my Garrett's my uh, producer, if you don't know who Garrett is. And uh, Lewis is, I guess, our, 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 our you can be, you can be our producer too. What the heck? We got a mob, we got three producers here, right? A mod's out, everybody's our producer here. But uh, it takes a lot of work to put on this show. So uh, years ago, when I used to start uh, doing lectures, I talked about the seven deadly sins of nutrition, the seven foods you want to avoid. And those seven foods are alcohol, meat, sugar, dairy, coffee, soda, and artificial sweetener. And a lot of you think, wait a minute, Dr. Joe, that's my whole diet. I can't survive without alcohol, meat, sugar, dairy, coffee, soda, and artificial sweetener. So Garrett decided, in his genius mind of his, that we were going to do one of the seven deadly sins every month. And so today we're going to do meat. We're going to talk about meat, what's in meat, and I'm not telling you you have to stop eating meat. I never tell you to do anything, by the way. If you ever listen to the show, we never tell you to do anything. We just give you advice on what you can do, and then you make the decision. You're all intelligent. You wouldn't be listening to the show if you weren't super intelligent. And so because of that, we give you the information you need. So we're going to talk about meat today. Uh, if you have any questions, are we going to open the lines yet? I guess not yet. Not, 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 not quite yet. Okay, so we will open the lines. Uh, when we open the lines, not yet. If you have any healthcare questions, the number is 844-44-DR-JOE, 844-44-DR-JOE. Not ready to open them yet, so don't call yet. You won't get through. And not just about uh, meat or whatever we're talking about that show, but any health topic you have. So what's the beef with meat? Some people say it's good. Some people say it's bad. Let's get started there. There was a recently a, a study linking meat and mortality, and it lit up the media. Headlines were things like, uh, red meat death study. Will red meat kill you? Singing the blues about red meat. Now, warning from this study done by the researchers of Harvard School of Public Health, it sounded pretty ominous. Every single serving of unprocessed meat you eat. Now, when I say unprocessed meat, that would be steak, hamburgers, pork, etc. Processed meat is cold cuts, salamis, things like that. But the unprocessed meat, every serving, increase your risk of dying prematurely by 13%. Now, if you ate processed meat, hot dog, sausage, bacon, things like that, it increased risk of 20%. This, is, this was published in the Archives of Internal Medicine. So that's pretty serious stuff. If there was a way to reduce your risk of dying by 20%, that's pretty huge. Well, there is, and this is just one thing now. Death rates among those who ate red meat were higher than those who ate the least amount of red meat. Now, there's a lot of reasons why that might be. It might be the meat, it might be lifestyle, it might be how the meat is processed. But the author, authors of the archive paper uh, suggested that the increased risk of red meat may come from saturated fats, cholesterol, and iron. Now, here's the thing with iron. Men, men especially, we usually have plenty of iron. It's very rare somebody comes in my office that's a man and says they're low in iron. Now, if they are low in iron, the first thing I look at is, is there any internal bleeding? Because if you have bleeding in your colon, you may be wasting iron. But men, we don't lose iron. Women with their men menstrual cycle every month lose iron. And so women are more likely to be iron deficient than men are. However, the iron that's found in meat if it's too, too much iron in your blood, can actually essentially oxidize. It can rust, for lack of a better word, and that can cause arterial damage and increase your risk of heart attack. So men, we have to be careful that we don't have too much iron. So a little trick that I do, and I do this often, is I donate blood. And I tell people, sometimes they'll, they'll come in, I'll say, Doc, I have too much iron in my blood. Doctors don't know what to do. 
a simple thing you can do is go donate blood because that'll bring your iron levels down. Now, another trick with blood is that you get um, you get your blood tested. They do some basic testing, not a lot. But it's interesting. I had a friend of mine, and uh, she's a nurse, and she would tell me if she started dating someone and started getting serious into a relationship, she would ask them if they donated blood on a regular basis. And if the answer was yes, that was kind of like a screening test she'd do because if you had any diseases, they wouldn't take your blood. So if they didn't, if they did it on a regular basis, obviously they didn't have any diseases, and that was one. That's just one step. I don't recommend that as your only step for sc scanning partners. But this was a little trick she did. So I don't mind donating blood. I like it. As a matter of fact, I feel good when I donate blood. Uh, I assume somebody's going to get a pint of some really good blood, and no harm for me. I don't eat the cookies and the cakes they give you. Of course, I I, I just have some water when I'm done. I never get dizzy after I donate blood or anything. But for men, it's a really good idea to donate blood on a regular basis. Postmenopausal women, same thing. If you have the opportunity to donate blood, I strongly advise that you do, and you may be saving a life. So there's an extra bonus there. But cancer-causing compounds in meat may also be a problem when the meat is cooked. So it could be that if you eat more meat, it could be the cholesterol, it could be the saturated fat, it could be the iron. But when you heat the meat, there's problems too. Sodium, particularly in processed foods, may also play a role, and it's possible that red meat eaters may likely have other risk factors involved as well. If somebody's a vegan, the chances are they're not going out and getting drunk every night. They're not probably not smoking every night. They, they're using uh, non-toxic colognes, or if they're using cologne at all. Uh, they're using non-toxic uh, deodorants, shampoos. They're living a healthier lifestyle. So it may not be just the meat. It might be the lifestyle as well, but the meat is certainly a driving factor there. So one way to cut back on red meat is follow what became real popular a while ago is the Mediterranean diet. Now, there is no such thing as the or the Mediterranean diet. It's a lifestyle. So instead, there's a lot of ways to go about it. Now, it's interesting because this Mediterranean diet came out. I read up on it, as I do, read up on everything. And I said, look at this. They're teaching what I've been teaching for 30 years now. Eating more fruits, vegetables, nuts, and seeds and cutting back on your al alcohol, meat, sugar, dairy, coffee, soda, and artificial sweetener. It was exactly what I was teaching. So once again, anything we teach in this show, chances are it's going to become mainstream in the future. We've talked about everything from margarine becoming a number one cause of heart disease. And sure enough, hydrogenated oils came out later on. We talk about medical findings. We talk about healthcare findings. And inevitably, it becomes mainstream. So we have a folder, and Garrett's threatened me to do a show on this several times. It's called the Dr. Joe Was Right folder. And all the things that we talked about that I was right about for years, now they're coming to fruition. They're not coming to fruition. They're just there. Folks, got to go to break. If you have any questions, lines are open. 844-44-DR-JOE, 844-44-DR-JOE. Our website, drjoe.com, drjoe.com. I'm Dr. Joe Esposito. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Joe Esposito on 95.5 WSB, Atlantis News and Talk. Hey, folks, Dr. Joe here. So glad you're with us today. Talking today about meat, one of my favorite topics there. And it's funny, we, we live stream a lot of these shows on, Inst on Facebook and Instagram. So if you follow us on social media, you get to see that there too. And it's interesting because the, the list of the viewers are so smart. My listeners are so smart. My viewers are so smart. They start asking me questions that I'm going to cover in the show, I promise. So they're jumping ahead here. So we're talking about meat today. And somebody said, what about grass-fed? We're going to cover that in a second. So don't worry. Let's talk about the Mediterranean diet. Uh, let's start taking some callers too. We got a lot of callers. 844-44-Dr. Joe is the number here. James, how can we make your day better? Hey, Dr. Joe. A uh, little bit off topic, but I just wanted to get your thoughts on supplementing uh, with boron and uh, borax in particular. Okay, I'm not a big fan of that because if you do too much of it, it can cause some damage. So I've seen that before, and people uh, can do that to kill off yeast infections. I've heard about that. Um, so uh, boron, you should be, if you're getting a good diet, th doing things like Dr. Joe's Super Greens, Dr. Joe's Essential Source, fruits, vegetables, nuts, and seeds, you should get enough boron. I have seen oh, okay. people do that with borax. You just got to be really careful because that might just be too much and a little too strong. So if you're eating a good diet, okay. there are ways to get rid of yeast infections aside from that. Got you. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Right. Folks, if you have any questions, 844-44-DR-JOE. Karen, how can we make your day better? Oh, hi. This is also a little off topic. That's but right. um, I have a question for you from listening to your show for um, some time. My husband has an issue belching constantly uh -huh. and i'm wondering if i brought him in for some sort of 
um, readjustment if that would help that issue. If belching is a symptom, just like pain is a symptom, just like uh, swelling is a symptom, if you have ga- acid reflux, heartburn, burping, gas, bloating, belching, those are all symptoms. They're telling you that something's wrong. So kudos to you, Karen, for being observant enough to say, hey, that's not normal because you shouldn't belch because you have a, you, when you swallow food, it goes down your esophagus and you, you have your diaphragm in the middle of your body. And in the diaphragm is a hole called the lower esophageal sphincter. That hole opens, food drops in the stomach, it closes, and then the stomach digests food in a perfect world and passes it on into the small intestine. Chances are your stomach's husband is pushing up into that hole, opening up the lower esophageal sphincter. That's where the belching comes from. And when that happens, that acid that's coming up into the throat could eat away at the esophagus. In fact, Eddie Money, he used to be a DJ here at one of the stations I work at, and I've got a picture of him, (laughs) neat guy, big fan of our show, actually. Eddie Money was just (laughs) just announced that he has esophageal cancer. And a lot of that comes from acid reflux coming up into the throat. And so in many cases, we at my team of doctors, I've trained them how to do this. You can adjust or pull the stomach down away from the diaphragm. And so the belching goes away, but the belching again is a symptom that you're not digesting your food properly. So to answer your question in the short version, yes, we probably can help him. But how do you like test for that to know if he does have acid reflux or something else going on that it's a symptom of? Right, we do a test, we use something called applied kinesiology. And that's kind of hard to explain verbally. You kind of got to show people. But if you touch an area of the body that isn't working right, it makes all the muscles in the body go weak for just a second. So if I push against his stomach and push it and then push against one of his muscles, if the muscle goes weak, that's one way to tell that there could be a problem there. We can do that with the spine. We can do it with all the joints in the body. So we do that technique. And many times that we find it, we adjust. We pull the stomach away from the diaphragm. Then we also check the nerves from the spine that control the digestive system. Because if he has a pinched nerve there, we can pull the stomach down all day. But if the brain can't tell the stomach to stay there, it's not going to work as well as it should. And so the patient says, well, I went. I didn't get all the results I wanted. Well, you didn't let us finish the job. So we would check the spine. If there's nothing there, great. If the stomach is there, we pull the stomach away from the diaphragm. And then hopefully the problem solved. Well, I think he does have a back spine pinched uh, nerve problem as well. So uh, I'm wondering if this is related. It now, probably so. is. Yeah, that's why I say that. It usually we- is, yeah. We will send them in. Well, thank you. Great, Karen. I appreciate it. And folks, if you do want to make an appointment, you can call 844-44-DR-JOE. Um, and my website is drjoe.com. If you, have, if you want to make an appointment, you can do it there as well. Uh, okay. And let's see what uh, – man, let's uh, – well, it kind of falls in place with the last question. Ray, Ramon, how can we make your day better? Uh, hi there, Dr. Joe. I've got my mom actually uh, here with me. She, uh, she has this uh, – issue where she's been coughing but she's been coughing fairly con- well i wouldn't say consistently like every day but uh well actually it is every day but it's not um it's not consistent throughout the day mm-hmm. it's generally sometimes when she's talking she gets an itch sure. and and, mm-hmm. and she gets that but it also she sits in this uh recliner yeah and it seems like when she sits in the recliner she starts you know coughing a lot so i'm, I'm kind of wondering what, what you think that might be it's a vinyl recliner Okay. Yeah, she's here. Okay. Yeah, I guess. There you go. Hi, Mom. Um, yeah, it, Hi. It's, it could be that the stomach is pushing up against the diaphragm. We see this a lot, like the last caller Karen did. Um, when we test our patients, about 85% of our patients have some type of issue here. So by sitting all day, the stomach is now pushing up against the diaphragm. And also, as we get older, our muscles get weaker. So does the diaphragm. So does the lower esophageal sphincter. So it's very common to find the older the person, the more common this situation is. So that cough could be acid coming up into the throat, irritating the vocal cords. And that's what it usually is. So if we pull the stomach down, get her on a good diet that doesn't irritate the stomach anymore, in most cases, that problem is resolved. Okay. She also has a, a, one of those uh, reclining beds, that, uh, those craftmatic sure. type beds. Uh-huh. And she, she, likes to, she likes to sleep with her head down. So I think I don't, that might... Legs up. Yeah, that might that might have something to do with and that, it as well. Yeah, but if we, yeah, if we pull the stomach away from the diaphragm, hopefully we resolve all those problems. So okay, that yeah. sounds great. And you're Perfect. in reference to the, in reference to the diet. What do you recommend? Well, no, no he's yeah, I, don't worry, but I'll take this. Care all right, of this, uh, yeah, we'll, keep listening, mom. We're going to cover that in a minute. Okay. All right. All right thanks. Thank yeah. Thanks so much. And again, folks, we have offices in the Atlanta area, Marietta, Duluth, and Stockbridge. So if you want to come see us, just go to the website or drjoe.com or 844-44-DR-JOE, which is the number here at the studio you can call right now with your questions. And that number rings through to my offices when I'm not on the air. So we're talking today about meat and what's going on. You know, is it meat good? Is it meat bad? Well, the Mediterranean diet seems to solve a lot of the problems. 
Um, what the Mediterranean diet says to do, eat a lot of fruits and vegetables, whole grains, beans, nuts, and seeds every day. That should make up a major majority of your diet. And I agree 100% with that. Fat from things like olive oil can account from up to 40% of your calories. We're finding now that the less oil you use, the better. Because oil is a processed food. And I've always said, you know, use oil you know, sparingly. And now the research is coming out showing that that's the case as well. So oil is a processed food. The less processing we do to our foods, the better off we are. Like even red meat versus processed meat. There's two different things. We're going to cover what the difference is there and how the processed meat is so much worse. I mean, red meat's bad enough. Processed meat is so much worse. If you're going to eat meat or dairy products, I recommend you do organic only. And this is a good rule to follow because if it's not organic, you shouldn't be eating it. Number one, it's not as uh, accessible, which is good. And number two... 30 years ago, we wouldn't have to worry about things like steroids, hormones, chemicals, pesticides, herbicides, genetically, genetically modified food, glyphosate, weed killer, all going into the meat. So meat's a lot different than it was, than it, than, than it is today. So if you're going to eat any animal products, meat, butter, cheese, yogurt, eggs, ice cream, I recommend organic only. Folks, got to go to break. If you have any health care questions, the number here at the studio, 844-44-DR-JOE. My website, well over 1,000 hours of podcast there. We have a blog there. Uh, drjoe.com and you can also make appointments there drjoe drjoe.com a um, lot of good information there folks again the lines are open 844 Joe. we're talking today about meat the good the bad and the ugly I'm Dr. Joe Esposito we'll be right back hey Mandy live WSB Atlantis News and Talk hey folks Dr. Joe here so glad you're with us talking today about meat hot topic man social media is lighting up on this stuff um, so we, we live stream on Facebook and Instagram. So if you follow us on Facebook and Instagram, you'd know that. And here's something I want you to do. Now, this show, of course, is heard all over the world. But in the Atlanta area next week, we're going to do a live event. And I want to invite 50 of our listeners. And we're going to have a catered, a, a vegan catering. It's going to be a real big shindig. And we're going to do a live event right here at the studio in WSB in Atlanta. And we're going to uh, have uh, TV cameras there as well. So we need to p people to sign up. So if you go to our website, is it on the website right now, Garrett? Okay. Yep, it's on the website. So there's a pop-up. There's a push notification. There's an email blast that went out to our email uh, campaign. And uh, it so, is also right there on the so, homepage. Right on our homepage. So uh, send us your information. We randomly pick 50, well, 25 people, right? 25 people and they bring a guest? Yep, 25 okay. people plus a guest. So it's very limited. So sign up and we randomly pick folks. You got to do that right now at the website, drjoe.com, D-R-J-O-E.com. Do it right now. Um, so that we can get you in there and hopefully get you live on our show. It'll be a lot of fun. And this could be your last chance. Why? What's going to happen? To sign up. Oh, to sign up. I thought something was happening to me. <laughs> <laughs> you got some guys waiting outside for me? Well, you did say your favorite movie is The Godfather. It is The Godfather, yes. They asked me at the break, what's my favorite movie? The Godfather. I thought it was a documentary. Being raised in an Italian family, I thought it was a documentary. I didn't know. <laughs> was it like your uncle? I, every uncle I ever had was on the screen up there. It was so funny. It was great. And my grandfather could have been Don Corleone. He was Don Esposito, though. So he was. I don't know if he was a Don. I'm only kidding. I don't know that for a fact. So we're talking today about meat and boy, brajol and meatballs. I grew up eating meat, but again, the meat then is different than the meat now. We covered that before the break. You didn't have to worry about a lot of the chemicals and steroids and hormones. The word organic didn't even exist back then, except for chemistry, because we didn't have to worry about everything was grown organically. Everything was grown with fertilizer. Everything was grown in rotated crops and rich soil. And so now it's it's a different world. And we can go back to the old days. It really, we really can. And when you give up things like meat, which is usually the most expensive part of your diet, when you give up the seven deadly sins, alcohol, meat, sugar, dairy, coffee, soda, and artificial sweetener, you're not spending that crazy amount of money on those things. And you can buy a whole lot of fruits and vegetables and still have tons of money left over. And I still can't figure out uh, like when people go to these fancy coffee shops and spend that much money. I cannot for the life of me understand why you would spend 4 and $5 for a cup of coffee. It just blows my mind. I don't get it. If you are going to drink coffee, it's got to be organic as well because your coffee is sprayed with a lot of chemicals and we want you to avoid that. So our goal, we're a team of chiropractors, our goal is to get you well and keep you well. And we want to do it from every aspect we possibly can. We want to get you well from the, spine, from the nervous system, the digestive system, and your diet. So again, the Mediterranean diet, good idea. And as a side note, it's also very good for the environment. Because the number one reason we're clearing timber down in the Amazon rainforest is what? Meat consumption. So it's good for you. It's good for the environment. Whatever pushes your buttons. I don't care what it is. It's just, and it's a lot cheaper. Maybe it's your wallet that's driving you. Let's take a little few more calls here at 844-44-DR-JOE. 
May, how can we make your day better? Hello, May. Hello. Yes, yes, May. May? That's you. That's you. Yeah. Okay. Yes. I'm not Thank May. You. You're May. Yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> listen, I, I listen to you all the time, and I'm almost down to three times eating meat three times a week. Good girl. So I'm doing good on that. Excellent. But my question is, I went to the doctor a while back uh -huh. because my left leg was bothering me. Sure. So he did X-rays and everything, and all he could come up with was arthritis. Sure. So I've been doing a lot of reading, uh -huh. and I read where taking slack oil would be really good. So mm -hmm. I do like a tablespoon and a half. I put sure. it in my smoothie or on a salad. However way I get it in me, I get it every single day. Good. But my question is, is that something I okay to do? Or am I doing too much? No, nope, you're fine. In fact, I'd rather you do this. It's going to save you some money too. Is just get okay. some flax seeds and grind them up and eat them right away. Mm -hmm. Because as soon okay. as we take the oil, and I'm going to give you some more advice, so don't go anywhere, you may. As soon as you take okay. the flaxseed and, and process it into an oil, it starts to oxidize. It starts to break down. Okay. So if you have okay. the fresh flax seeds, and you got to grind it like in a coffee grinder, you know, a little magic bullet, whatever you have, grind it up and then okay. eat it right away. The faster you eat it, the better it's going to be. It's going to be a great source of fiber, so be careful. Start out slow, maybe half a teaspoon to a teaspoon, because it can really get okay. things moving along. But here's the thing All with right. arthritis. Osteoarthritis is always mechanical. There's always a mechanical component to osteoarthritis. What that means is mm -hmm. bones are out of alignment rubbing up against each other. Mm -hmm. And so exactly. whether it's the knee, the, right. So we can take all the flax oil we want. We can do all the stem cells in the world we want. But we also need to realign the bones. Because mm -hmm. it's like the tires on your car are out of alignment. You change the tires, don't fix the alignment, the new tires wear out. So, so I need to check you out. I need to come to see you. Huh? Well, I would love to see you, May. I think it would be a <laughs> highlight of my day. And it would okay. also hopefully help that out because we've got to get the nerve supply from the spine to the knees, make sure it's working, check the knees themselves, and also check your feet. Because if the okay. feet are out of alignment, that could be causing the knees to go out of alignment. So we got to look at everything, well, not just one thing. Okay. All right, May. Well, so thanks a lot. My pleasure. And the number you just dialed, May, that number will ring through to my offices when I'm not on the air during business hours. Right, okay? right. All right. Okay. Thanks, Thank May. Appreciate you. it. All right. Well, a lot of callers today. Lisa, how can we make your day better? Hey, Dr. Joe. How are you doing today? Very well. Uh, I was wanting to know if taking vitamins for your eyes would that help you well i have macular degeneration i was diagnosed several years ago with macular degeneration so basically i was told you're going to go blind uh -huh. uh, it is what it is deal with it um i of course never accept anything and uh that's when i really hunkered down on dr joe's super greens and dr joe's essential source now if you're your new listener those are two supplements i recommend everybody start with yeah i'm not a new listener yeah i know that <laughs> But people say all the time, say, Dr. Joe, you know, where do I start? So you start with making some dietary changes, super greens and essential source. And then, of course, come see us so we can do an evaluation with you and determine, right. is there any structural issues? Do you have acid reflux? Can we fix your stomach? But generally speaking, super greens and essential source, I really hunker down on. Uh -huh. Every year since then, my macular degeneration is getting better and better and better. And if you go to our website, drjoe.com, if you go onto the blog, uh, Garrett put up recently the pictures of my eyes. Uh -huh. With the macular degeneration and year by year, how it's getting better and better. So, yes, vitamins for your eyes, super greens, an essential source, and then vitamin D is where I'd start. Yeah, would that, uh, super greens and all, would that help also? Uh, I have Bardet, but they what's like behind the eye. Would that help that? It should. Okay, again, when the body gets the nutrients that it needs, a lot of times the body is able to heal. Uh -huh. And that's why I created super greens, an essential source. They're two powders. Mix them together, shake it up with some coconut milk. Most people love it. Some people are a little more sensitive. Then throw a frozen banana in there if you want to and mix it up with a frozen banana, some frozen berries. Uh, we also have a mint super greens, which is more minty flavor. Uh -huh. I personally like the regular, but some people like the mint. So it depends mm -hmm. if you're sensitive or not. Okay. Yeah, what kind of vitamins could I get like for the eyes? What would you recommend? Well, that has, that'll have the zeaxanthin and, and, and the lutein in it. Those are the two that are eye vitamins, but that'll be found in the fruits and vegetables. So. Oh, yeah. okay. All right. Well, thank you. Have a good day. Thanks, Lisa. Yeah, it's a bummer, man. When I was diagnosed with that, I, I freaked out. Like, you have macular degeneration. And then every year, if you've heard, never heard the story, uh, a couple of years later, I went and got my eyes checked again by the same doctor. And he put the two pictures of my eyes back to back and started shaking. And I said, what's wrong? He says, it's getting better. It can't get better. Macular degeneration never gets better. It stays the same or gets worse. So I've told him, I said, well, he said, what are you doing? And I told him, super green is an essential source. And um, his new doctor now, Dr. Z, um, she says, I send people to your website almost every day. She says, and I, I wish every eye doctor would because you need these nutrients, folks. Your body needs nutrition to function normally. It cannot function optimally if you're eating the seven deadly sins of nutrition. 
You're only going to function optimally when you give it the food that it absolutely positively needs, which are super high concentrations of fruits, vegetables, nuts, and seeds in a raw, pure form. I don't recommend uh, synthetic supplements. I recommend non-synthetic supplements, and that's what you're going to get in Super Greens and Essential Source. And there's other supplements as well, nitric oxide for circulation, vitamin D for the immune system, especially in the winter. Folks, everybody should be taking vitamin D. 5,000 international units a day. Dr. Joe's vitamin D, that's five drops. It's real. It's the least expensive uh, insurance policy you'll ever buy is vitamin D. Folks, got to go to break. If you have any healthcare questions, 844-44-DR-JOE. When we come back, we're going to talk about processed meat versus unprocessed meat. Is there a difference? The answer is yes. And then we got to talk about chicken. Folks, I'm Dr. Joe Esposito. Tell your friends about the show. We'll be right back. Well, USB, Atlantis News and Talk. Hey, folks, Dr. Joe. Ahmad's playing some good music today. I know some of you around the country can't hear the music because your radio station, you have to have these right, you have to sign these forms and pay for use of music and stuff. So some stations can't listen, can't hear the music. But Ahmad's rocking it today, man. DJ Ahmad there, man. <laughs> All right, if you have any questions, folks, lines are open 844 Dr. Joe. Doesn't have to be about me, it can be about really anything uh, related to healthcare. So 844 uh, Dr. Joe. World Health Organization report says eating processed meat is carcinogenic. So let's talk about processed meats. World Health Organization, uh, International Agency of Research on Cancer announced that consuming processed meats is, a, is carcinogenic to humans. All right, there it is. It's a known carcinogen, meaning it's known to cause cancer. Why would you want to put anything in your body that's known to cause cancer? It's like smoking. I never understood smoking. Now, I understand the addiction of smoking, and I understand it's very hard to break these addictions. Now, vaping, of course, has stepped in as the new smoking, and it's still an addiction, and it's still bad. Probably need to do a show on vape vaping someday, too. So it's not good for you, folks, and we know that these processed meats are known carcinogens, and red meat is a probable carcinogen. So once again, usually when something's a probable carcinogen, it's got to work its way up to carcinogenic. Well, it's already carcinogenic, just doesn't have the title yet. So processed meats, meat that is transfer, transformed through salting, curing, fermentation, smoking, or other processes to enhance the flavor or improve uh, pr uh, preservation. Red meat, I love this, this de definition. Unprocessed mammalian muscle meat, mm, mammalian muscle, such as beef, pork, lamb, mutton, horse, and goat meat. Consumption of processed meat is classified as carcinogenic. Red meat is probable carcinogenic. Conclusions were primarily based on the evidence of colorectal cancer. The more processed meat you eat, the more risk of colon cancer you have. But there's other things that are involved too, heart disease, diabetes, other forms of cancer. Uh, processing meats such as curing, we add nitrates and nitrites or smoking can lead to the formation of pot potentially cancer-causing carcinogenic chemicals called N-nitroso compounds and then also polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons. These are two known carcinogens. Cooking any type of meat, especially at high temperatures, uh, with over a flame, such as pan frying, grilling, or barbecuing, can produce carcinogenic chemicals such as heterocyclic amines and polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons. Tell you what they are. Polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons, when you cook meat and it smells good, that, that flame broiling smell that it gives off and you walk past the barbecue place and it smells so yummy, those are called polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons. Uh, heterocyclic amines are when you heat the meat at a high temperature, those grill marks you get or the burn marks, those are heterocyclic amines. And those are both known carcinogens. So even if it's red meat, once you cook it at a high temperature and you get these, the, the red marks, you, the krill marks, you're going to get those heterocyclic amines. So once again, we're really increasing our risk of cancer. Now, there's a lot of things that can increase our risk of cancer. We've done shows on cancer. If you go to website, drjoe.com, just type in cancer into the search bar. You can listen to shows we've done on cancer. And so this is something that's easily avoided. You may not be able to avoid things like sitting in car, uh, in traffic, inhaling car exhaust. You may not be able to avoid uh, if you're in a building and it turns out it has uh, 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 chemicals in it that you can't get out of. I mean, long ago, we used leaded paint. It was great. Now we find out that it's poison. Okay, so we know we, things that keep coming up in the future, um, we don't know about now. So there will be, I promise, 20, 30 years from now, things we're doing now that we think are safe or not. So the simpler you keep your life, the better off you're going to be. It's important to keep in mind this research pertains to uh, uh, the, the, the colon cancer death only. It's well known that it increases uh, red meats and processed meat, increase your risk of other diseases like heart disease, stroke, type 2 diabetes. So this is just one study, one disease. We pretty much know it's there. 
So now some people come to me and they say, well, Dr. Joe, you talk about organic meats. So I'm gonna do organic nitrate-free processed meats. So what they do is instead of adding chemical nitrates, nitrates become nitrites, which we then, when they're heated, become nitrosamines in the presence of protein. And the nitrosamines are the cancer-causing problems, uh, chemicals. They'll use celery juice. That's natural way to preserve the meats. Well, celery juice are rich in nitrates. Now the source of the nitrates that are added to preserve doesn't matter. Once it goes through that pre preservation process, it still becomes nitrosamines and that's where the problems comes in. And when you heat it, of course, the polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons are released. So it's not something you wanna consider doing. Now, until we know more about the mechanism, I would say don't do it because the chances are that we're gonna find more and more research on this and why it's bad. And you might think, well, how about chicken or turkey hot dogs or turkey bacon, uh, are those better? Chicken and turkey hot dogs may contain preservatives such as nitrates. However, the meats contain less heme iron than the processed red meats. So there's one slight benefit because the heme iron that's found in meat raises the iron in your blood. Heme means blood, and it comes from the blood of the animal. And when the heme iron oxidizes in the blood, that's when it causes some real serious damage. So too much iron in the blood can increase your risk of heart disease. And so once again, we talked earlier about donating blood. When you donate blood, they check your iron levels. If your iron levels are too high, that becomes a real serious problem. And some people are taking supplements. And if you look, not, not just our supplements, but all supplements, most good supplements that are for men only don't have extra iron in them. And that's the reason. Because if the iron gets too high in men, we don't menstruate, we can have a big issue. Women that are postmenopausal shouldn't have iron in their supplements either, much iron. You have a little bit, but not an actually added iron. And there's two types of iron, is heme and non-heme. Heme iron comes from blood. Non-heme iron comes from plants. Now the plant, the non-heme iron isn't absorbed as well as the heme iron. There's a problem. However, mother nature solves the problem. When vitamin C is present in the non-heme plant-based iron, it gets absorbed very well. So if you're taking a non-heme iron that's by itself, again, it's an isolate, probably not a good idea. When you take a whole food supplement, like supplement made from whole foods, not from the store, maybe they have good ones there too, then you get all the benefits. And that's why when I created Dr. Joe's Super Greens and Dr. Joe's Essential Source, that's the minimum amount of nutrients you need every single day. I mean, I can't imagine anyone not taking these supplements. They're two powders. I think they taste great. Every now and then a patient will say, well, Dr. Joe, I don't like the Super Greens. It's a little earthy tasting. It is. So I mix the two together. Now, if it's still earthy, you can throw in uh, frozen bananas, some frozen berries, whip it up in a food processor. We also have a, uh, a mint flavored uh, a super greens as well. And some people like that too. I personally, I like the, I'm a purist. I like the pure form. So, but the processed meats uh, with, with so-called organic meats, probably better. But again, if it's processed and it has the nitrates in it, you still have a big risk there. So I'm gonna recommend you stay away from those as well. Folks, I'm Dr. Joe Esposito talking about meats today. Is it good for you? And we're going to talk about chicken when we come up next. If you have any healthcare questions, the lines are open 844 44 Dr. Joe, 844 44 DRJOE. Our website, drjoe.com, over a thousand hours of podcasts there. Uh, the supplements we talk about Super Greens, Essential Source, Nitric Oxide, Vitamin D, a bunch of others, those are all on the website is too, drjoe.com. And you can pick them up in our offices in Marietta, Duluth, and Stockbridge, save some postage. I'm Dr. Joe Esposito. Don't go anywhere. We're going to be right back. 5 WSB by Virtual Imaging. The information presented on this program is not intended to take the place of your personal physician's advice, and it is not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. Discuss this information with your own physician or healthcare provider to determine what is right for you. Here to help us, Dr. Joe Esposito, who is a pain management specialist. Dr. Oz himself has been nice enough to call in. Joe came on. He was a wonderful guest. Dr. Joe Esposito. I got rid of Google after meeting Joe. You know, he's got you know, <laughs> <Yeah>. encyclopedic <laughs> knowledge. There's so much research out there. And so many of you don't know that there's something you can do to get yourself well. So why would you take the risk of putting something in your body that might cause some real serious neurological damage and that's where the problems come in. And that's why we do this show. The best health and wellness show in the world. Stop suffering needlessly. Every day, patients come in our office and say, Dr. Joe, why didn't I do this sooner? And my answer is, I don't know.
Hey, folks, Dr. Joe, hour two of the show. If you're just joining us, welcome. Glad you could be here. If you're staying with us, of course, I love when you guys are with us. Talking today about meat and a big topic, man. A lot of callers calling in. Social media is lighting up on this. We uh, live stream on Facebook and Instagram, so follow us there. Uh, we do have a live event coming up uh, next week, as a matter of fact. So if you go to my website, drjoe.com, you can register. Uh, it's going to be at the Atlanta Studios at WSB Radio. Uh, we're going to be catered. Um, we're only allowing 50 people with 25 with a guest. So go and register. Re re get all your friends to register. Uh, the bigger registration we get, the more likely we are to have more live events like this. Want to get back to start talking about chicken, but first we have to do this. Talking head to toe with Dr. Joe. Man, love that intro, man. That's Lewis coming through for us again. All right, every every week we do a section called Head to Toe with Dr. Joe. And what we do is we pick a topic. We pick we literally picked it about a minute ago. Uh, and Garrett says to me, Dr. Joe, let's talk about this topic. And what do you want me to talk about today, Garrett? You know, I last time we did, uh, what was the last time? Pancreas. Pancreas. I didn't know much anything about the pancreas. I also know just about nothing about the gallbladder. Ah, so he does this to me. He gives me a topic, and then he says, here, give me 10 minutes on the gallbladder or whatever it is. So he puts <laughs> me on the spot. I think he just likes to do this. So Coming off the break. Coming off the break. Yeah, it's like, do the gallbladder. Huh? <laughs> no prep. I don't need prep for that. I don't need no stinking prep. All right, so the gallbladder. What happens is the gallbladder is a little thing, and if you remove it, if you look at it, it looks like a little like a little kid's balloon, like those little tiny round balloons. You blow it up, it's round, and it sticks on the liver. Now, the liver's on the right side of your body, so kind of... Know, right below your breast area, kind of. That would be where your gallbladder is. And what the gallbladder does, it's a storage facility. So the gallbladder doesn't make anything necessarily, but the liver breaks down uh, fats and cholesterol, and it creates something called bile. Now, bile essentially drips into the gallbladder, and the gallbladder fills up with this bile. And then when you eat something with fat in it, the, the gallbladder <laughs> squirts this bile into the small intestine. What are you looking at, Maude? You That's the sound your gallbladder makes. How's it, how does it go? Uh, there you go. Close okay. enough. Good. Okay. <laughs> Make sure. That's another sound bite for me to pull. Yeah, that's another sound bite. <laughs> so the gallbladder <laughs> squirts this, squirts the bile into the small intestine, where it breaks down fats. And if you can imagine, it's like it's like dish soap. You have greasy dishes in the sink. You squirt some dish soap in it, and it dissolves the grease. That's exactly what bile does. So it helps break down fat. So you can get gall stones and it can build up in the gallbladder and that can become an issue. The gallbladder can become diseased. Now, if, you, if the gallbladder is diseased, it's a good idea to probably have it removed. Now, I'm not a fan of surgery, you know that if you listen to the show, but sometimes you need surgery, absolutely. And so the gallbladder may have to be removed, but if you can save your gallbladder and there are things you can do to help save the gallbladder, it's a much better choice. Because when we talk about digestion, the ma macronutrients, carbohydrates, fats, and proteins have two different places they get digested. Carbohydrates get digested in the mouth with saliva, and then the pancreas helps break it down. Proteins get digested in the stomach, and then the pancreas help break it down. And then fats, the pancreas spits out a, a fat lipase to break down the fats, and then the gallbladder steps in and <clears throat> squirts, the, squirts the bile into there and breaks down the, the carbohydrates, the, the fats, I'm sorry. When you have your gallbladder removed, you now only have one way to break down fat, and that's your pancreas. And if you're eating a bad diet, if you're eating the seven deadly sins, alcohol, meat, sugar, dairy, coffee, soda, artificial sweetener, a lot of breads, cookies, cakes, donuts, and pastas, you're really stressing your pancreas. And it doesn't have a backup system if the gallbladder is removed. So the gallbladder is vital to help solve the problem. Now, a lot of patients have come to me over the years, and they'll say, Dr. Joe, I had really bad stomach pain, acid reflux. The doctor removed my gallbladder. And I say, did it help at all? They said, no. The gallbladder was perfectly healthy. It was removed. It didn't solve the problem. In most cases, when I hear this story, we can adjust or pull the stomach down away from the diaphragm. From a chiropractic standpoint, adjust the spine to open up the nerve supply and then get you on easy to digest fats. And one of the fats that are really hard to digest are animal fats. Another reason why I don't eat meat. One of the many reasons I don't eat meats are animal products. So again, if you're going to eat them, make sure they're organic animal products. It's your call. Whatever you do is your choice. I choose not to. Um, but if you're going to eat animal products, make sure they're organic. But th those animal fats are really hard to digest. And that's why it's so important you have your gallbladder. If you've had your gallbladder taken out, I'm going to recommend you come see us. And we put together a nutrition program for you. Not only food, but also supplements to help make up for the fact that you don't have a gallbladder anymore. Because what happens is if you don't do 
accommodate, let's say, for not having a gallbladder, your risk of heart disease starts to go up because you're not breaking down your fats. And the fats can get into the blood system and get into the liver, raise cholesterol, um, and then the low-density lipoproteins can oxidize and stick to the artery walls. So your risk, uh, your health disease goes up. And I wish that doctors who do gallbladder surgeries would say, hey, listen, we got to do some lifestyle changes here. Because A, whatever you did to call, cause the gallbladder to go bad, if you keep doing it, that's going to be a problem. And then B, you need to alter it and, and make accommodations for the fact you don't have this store of bile anymore. So it's really important if you have your gallbladder taken out, it's not just a, hey, I clipped my toenails and I'm done. It's something you really need to consider. There are digestive enzymes. We have Dr. Joe's digestive enzymes. I put a lot of people on that. If they're still having problems, there's other digestive enzymes I may recommend for them, like Lipase. And we have a whole line of supplements on our website, drjoe.com. But we also use other companies as well. If we don't have something uh, in our arsenal, we can recommend other ones as well. But gallbladder is really important. It helps you break down fat. And also, if you have your gallbladder out, sometimes it's hard to lose weight. So we can handle all that, hopefully, for you if you call, come to see us. Our website, drjoe.com, over 1,000 hours of podcasts there. Uh, we have um, uh, a blog there as well. Uh, follow us on Facebook and Instagram. Send us your email address, drjoe.com. Uh, sign up for our live event coming up next week. It's on the website. You can just put your name and uh, email address in there. We'll put you in the, in the pool. Hopefully, you'll get chosen for our live event. So you're going to be free dinner there at that one. How about that? We're even catering it. If you have any health care questions, lines are open. Number here at the studio, 844-44-DR-JOE, 844-44-DR-JOE. That number rings through to my offices during business hours. But right now, I need your questions at 844-44-DR-JOE. We'll be right back. Management, double board certified in nutrition and has a BS in clinical nutrition and is a retired dietitian. Can you say overachiever? Dr. Joe Esposito on 95.5 WSB, Atlanta's News and Talk. Hey, Dr. Joe here. So glad you're with us today. Great show today. We're talking about meats and animal products and all sorts of fun stuff like that. We got to talk about chicken. We got to talk about pork. We got to talk about fish. I don't know if we're going to have enough time to cover it all. We could do like five shows, I think, on just this one topic. Um, and it's a hot topic. But uh, let's start taking some callers first. 844 44 Dr. Joe. 844 44 DRJOE. Joel, how can we make your day better? Hey, y'all were just talking about gall bladders and, you know, trying to keep them. Um, I was in the military and they took mine out because I had gallstones after about five trips to the hospital. Sure. So, what would you recommend? Uh, I didn't catch what y'all would recommend for me to do. I'm 33. Wow. And so it's changed my diet. Like, it's messed me up in a way to where. If I go a long period without eating and I eat anything, doesn't matter if it's fatty or not, it makes me have to go to the restroom pretty quick. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. So I didn't know how how would I be able to correct it. And I know you say stay away from animal fats. Right. That's that's the main thing. I would also recommend Dr. Joe's Digestive Enzymes. It's on the website, drjoe.com. So Super Green's an essential source across the board, especially if somebody has problems. Somebody on in, uh, social media just said they had, a piece, they had colon cancer. Super Green is an essential source. It's such an easy way to absorb high-quality nutrients. We put it in a form. It's a powder form that's so easy to absorb. So for that, Super Green is an essential source. Uh, for you, Dr. Joe's Digestive Enzymes, if you eat anything cooked, I do this anyway, even though I still have my gallbladder. Anytime I have anything cooked, I eat Dr. Joe's Digestive Enzymes because it helps break down the food more efficiently. So for you, I think that would be an right Before you eat or after? You can do it right before, during, or right after. It's not like it has to be exactly a certain time, but as long as it's in there with the okay. food. And that's going to help tremendously. And with you, you've got to stay away from fatty foods because where the gallbladder stores bile and squirts it out when you need it in large amounts, your liver is just kind of dripping bile like it would normally drip into the gallbladder and then be stored. Yours is kind of just dripping a little bit into the small intestine. And so that's why you, I would recommend something for you, something raw at every meal. And I say raw, broccoli, cucumbers, okay. tomatoes, avocado, salad, and you got to stay away from fatty foods. I mean, it just is what it is. So pretty much go on your, your uh, vegan diet pretty much? There you much? go. That, that, that would be ideal, yeah. And, I mean, you can eat some fatty foods as long as there's fiber with it, like nuts or seeds or olives, but you got to stay away from concentrated fats, yeah. No, that's fine. I'll just, I guess I'll just try to get in there sometime here soon and see if y'all help me put up a time because this is ridiculous. If I go a, a, any amount of, like, 
eight hours, like, you know, going to bed and doing what I get up in the morning, it's like instantaneous no matter what I eat. Yeah. Uh, so it's, it's just it's messed me up. So. And a lot of times we adjust the stomach. It, it relaxes the whole digestive system. And a lot of people in your si your situation have come to me and said, wow, Dr. Joe, whatever you guys did to my digestive system, I'm able to not have to run to the bathroom now. So many times we adjust the stomach, that helps too. So we, we'd get a whole protocol together for you. Okay. Great. All right. Well, I appreciate it. Thanks, y'all. appreciate you. All right, folks, if you have any questions, 844-44-DR-JOE, 844-44-DR-JOE. All right, let's, let's blaze through chicken here. So much to cover, so little time. We only have this segment and two more segments. Gosh, this goes so fast. And again, if, we don't, if you don't get through, you can always send us questions through the website, drjoe.com, and uh, we'll answer questions for you there. And the supplements we talk about are all available on the website. If you pick them up in our offices, the Atlanta area, we have offices in Marietta, Duluth, and Stockbridge. If you pick them up, you save shipping. I'm more than happy to save shipping. It's less work for Garrett and Tina having to put it in boxes and ship it to you. All right, so chicken, all over the world. Chicken is the go-to food anywhere I've ever been. I've traveled all over the world. Uh, there always seems to be chicken dishes. So I've rounded up some facts on chickens that might make you second-guess your favorite nuggets there. As far as cholesterol goes, poultry has the same impact on cholesterol as red meat. There's no difference there. Um, if you've ever watched how chickens are slaughtered, uh, or any animals are slaughtered, chances are you wouldn't eat them anyway. So it depends if there's a moral component for you. Um, just go online. Look up slaughterhouses. You'll see them. You're not going to want to eat them after that anyway. 97% of retail chicken breast is contaminated with dangerous bacteria. There were media reports they conducted uh, uh, chicken purchased around the United States. 97% of them harbored bacteria that could make you sick. Now, when you cook it, a lot of the bacteria uh, is removed. You know, it's killed. But I would rather not have it in there to begin with. Um, uh, commercial chickens oftentimes are loaded with arsenic. Food and Drug Administration admitted that chicken meat is filled with arsenic, which is a highly poisonous chemical, four times more toxic than mercury. If you've ever heard me talk about mercury, not a big fan of mercury, well, arsenic is there. Now, the substance is given to chicken because it promotes weight gain, and so they don't have to feed them as much, and they gain more weight, and it also makes it more pink, which is kind of cool. Uh, when ingested, arsenic can lead to invasive squamous, uh, squamous carcinoma, Bowen illness, uh, basal cell carcinoma, uh, liver, kidney, and lung, and bladder cancers. So again, it can stimulate these things. Is it going to? I don't want to take that chance. I don't know. Now, the FDA is trying to convince the public that chicken meat is still safer for consumption. Uh, despite the amount of arsenic found, experts have issued a warning about the responsibility of arsenic um, for fetus damage. So if you're pregnant or could become pregnant, these are things you have to consider as well. And chicken meat is filled with bacteria and cancer-causing arsenic. So another reason, if you're going to do animal products, and I, I wish you didn't, but if you're going to do animal products, I'm going to recommend organic only. Poultry industry has a big effect on the environment as well. Um, a lot of times uh, there was a report out recently that rice had arsenic in it. And rice does absorb arsenic from the soil, and there can be some natural ar arsenic in, in the soil that can be absorbed. However, many times they'll sell chicken poop to uh, rice farmers and they'll use it as fertilizer. They use chicken poop for a lot of different fertilizers. And the arsenic then is then put into the soil and then can be absorbed by foods that absorb arsenic like rice. So once again, if you're gonna eat rice, organic would be a better choice. Still may have arsenic in it, naturally occurring from the soil, but it's not gonna be as bad if, as if it's fertilized with chicken poop. So you're thinking to yourself, but Dr. Joe, what about free range? Free range, I don't like this one. Chickens are raised in cages many times, and they, they can't stand up, they can't turn around, and they live there until it's ready for slaughter time. Free range means they're not in a cage. Doesn't mean they're outside in the field eating bugs and dirt and you know crowing at the sun. What that means is they're just in a room where there's not cages, but they can be pretty packed in there. Um, and so there's still, whenever you pack any animals together, including humans, you run the risk of spreading disease. So we have to use things like antibiotics. Can't use steroids in chickens. So if a chicken says steroid-free, well, of course, but they can use antibiotics in chickens. And we've done shows on antibiotics in the past that if you ingest small doses of antibiotics over time, that can build up, they can, they can create in, uh, antibiotic-resistant bacteria in your body, and that can become a big issue. So once again, the less antibiotics you put in your body, the better. And most commercial meats, especially in the United States, uh, are fed antibiotics. It's just part of the processing. And so it may not be the best choice for you. And so again, organic would be a better choice or the ultimate choice would be don't eat them. It's just that simple. And it's not hard. I'm like, oh, I can't give up meat. I can't give up beef. I can't give up dairy. Yeah, you can. 
every person that ever went to a plant-based diet, every one of them, 100% of them, have said exactly what you're saying right now. So you're not the only one to say this. You're not original when it comes to that, I promise you. Once you start eating good foods, folks, I'm going to tell you, you're going to wonder, why didn't I do this sooner? Just like chiropractic care. People say to me all the time, why didn't I get chiropractic care sooner? I've had neck pain and back pain and shoulder pain and numbness and tingling, and I was in a car accident, and I never got care. And once they start receiving it, most of them say, I wish I'd done this sooner. So if you want to make an appointment, you go to our website, drjoe.com, uh, or you can call the number 844-44-DR-JOE during business hours. That rings through to my offices. I'm Dr. Joe Esposito. Don't go anywhere. I'm going to be right back. In a recent episode of the hit web series, Adam Ruins Everything. Can you look up Whipple Procedure? I'm not sure what he's talking about. W-H-I-P-P-L-E. Sometimes, the, uh, sometimes the, they spell it wrong. So. We agree with many of the problems the episode highlighted. In fact, these problems are the reason we started our company uh, to offer a better mattress known as a, a pancreo pancreo visit original mattress.com pancreo go duo do no next to me it's um involves the removal of the the wide part of the pancreas next to the first part of the small intestine the duodenum okay yeah okay uh, it also involves removal of the duodenum a portion of the common bile duct gallbladder and sometimes part of the stomach okay got it Okay. All right. It was spelled right. Now, this woman's daughter uses rice water to uh, rinse her hair. Uh huh. Because that's not safe either. I never heard that. Um, again, it, there's got to be arsenic sometimes is found, you know, in there. It just is what it is. Um, I don't know. I've never heard of rice water for rinsing the hair. That's interesting. Um, it's probably okay because you're not going to absorb a whole lot through your scalp. So it's not the end of the world. But it, again, if she's doing it, she's probably do organic anyway. Just organic rice anyway. I used to drink rice water in <coughs> horchatas. Oh, that's true. Those. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That can mm-hmm. I used to like those as a kid. Okay. I was one of those privileged um, kids with a nanny. Yeah. She was um, Latina. Yeah. And uh, she would always make a big pitcher of horchata. Yeah. Uh, I, I, had a, water. I had a Latino nanny as well. That's kind of that's how I. My grandmother, I called her nanny. <laughs> We up in Hoboken, New Jersey. We didn't have nannies. <laughs> we had roaches. So <laughs> I was raised by a roach. <laughs> it's a very southern thing, I guess. Yeah, having nannies. We ne- I never knew anybody that had any anyone come in the house ever. Like maids or anything? Nothing. Yeah. All right, what else um, you got? So this was kind of somewhat long-winded. Um, it's about blood pressure. Yvonne says she has a friend who has very high blood pressure, almost stroke level. Uh-huh. She's only 40. And she's had the problem since she was in her 20s. It seems to be genetic. And she was in the emergency room two times this week. Is there anything that can fix this? And she's not that overweight. Have we done shows on blood pressure, Garrett? I think we have, haven't we? Yeah, so go to the website, drjoe.com. Type in blood pressure. Uh, in a nutshell, could be the stomach up against the diaphragm. When, the, when anything's going on in the digestive system, it can irritate the vagus nerve. And the vagus nerve can control blood pressure. The vagus nerve also has a branch that controls the heart. So if the vagus nerve is irritated, it can affect the heart, which causes the heartbeat harder and raise the blood pressure. So if she has acid reflux, heartburn, burping, gas, bloating, she needs to come see us and get that fixed. The atlas, many times the top bone and neck can move out of place, and that can raise blood pressure as well because it puts pressure on the brain stem and the vagus nerve. There's been a lot of studies on chiropractic care and blood pressure, tons of them. Then we've got to look at her diet. Uh, what's she eating? Is she eating very, uh, you know, uh, foods that are stimulants, things that kick in the sympathetic nervous system. Sympathetic nerves speed you up. So coffee, chocolate, tea, uh, things like that would certainly, taurine would raise the blood pressure as well. Uh, excitable foods like meats and dairy products can raise blood pressure. So we really got to do a little more analysis, but I would check the digestive system, get her on super greens, an essential source. And then of course, Dr. Joe's nitric oxide support. Nitric oxide opens up the blood vessels and that can drop the pressure. So it'll treat the symptom, then we got to get to the cause. Um, Super green central source nitric oxide right away. What would you recommend for chronic low back pain slash sciatica? Chiropractic care. Absolutely positively, for low back and sciatic pain, the number one treatment for back pain is chiropractic care. Least expensive, most effective treatment for back pain is chiropractic care. It's, it's study after study after study. I don't, I don't know how else I can phrase that. So come see us, let's fix that. The same nerve, the sciatic nerve, also has, controls the colon, sex organs, and bladder. So with low back pain and sciatic pain, you might have gas, bloating, diarrhea, constipation, urinary problems, sexual problems, prostate issues in men, uh, u- uterus problems and period problems in women. So it's a lot more than, hey, my back hurts. It's affecting the organs. And if the bones try to place, they rub up against each other and they wear out. So that's a no-brainer there. That's an easy one. Toss me an underhand pitch for that one. <laughs> what else? 
I have lower back pain. I'll tell you what I'm doing first thing tomorrow morning. Getting adjusted. There you go. See? I did a lot of yard work today. No, no, no back pain. So. Uh, okay, Benjamin just recently had his gallbladder removed. Mm. If, if He says, he asks, if I stick to a healthy diet and exercise, should I still need supplements or have any worries? Yes. Because, again, you're not producing the bile. You took out one of the two ways to digest fat. So for someone like you, I would definitely say we recommend an external source for someone like that. The answer is resounding yes. Mm -hmm. Is um, is organic stevia considered an artificial sweetener? No, no. Artificial sweeteners are uh, uh, sucralose, aspartame, saccharin. Those are the artificial sweeteners. Stevia is not. Xylitol is not. Lohan is not. So those are all fine. What? Maltodextrin. Maltodextrin comes from corn, many times genetically modified. So that's why you want to do organic. Organic won't can't use genetically modified corn or genetically modified maltodextrin. So organic stevia is a better choice. Bam. Here's a here's another softball. Uh, what about boar's head lunch meat, or should I just stay away from it? Stay away from it. <laughs> uh, Got a better name. I, I, from under, from what I understand it tastes better too, but it's no. We said even organics, it's organic. It still has the nitrates and nitrates and nitrosamines. So, <sighs> wish I had a better answer for you. Uh, someone had a question about Moe's. You know the place when you walk in. Welcome to Moe's. Um, they said a Moe's salad with no cheese, no sour cream, but with steak, chicken, or tofu, which is the best choice with it. Tofu. Yeah. That's what I have. When I go to Moe's, I have a, a veggie burrito in a bowl, veggie burrito bowl, and I'm fine with it. Yeah. It's just a little bit of rice because I don't, it's just too many carbs. And I tell them not to give me the chips because the chips are there. Guess what I do with them? I eat them. So they give them to me. I don't go to Moe's. I like Moe's. Of all of, of all of them, Moe's is my favorite. Oh, yeah. Willie's is good too. I like Moe's better. Of all of them, I've tried them all. Moe's is still my favorite. Ah, you don't know what's good. My father used to say it. You don't know what's good. So, <laughs> I'm a most guy. I'll do the others if I have to. I'm a and a bunch of those, a bunch of racks they have there. Because we had a catered at the office a few times. I get the racks. We bring them back. I think you get $1.50 each. So, I got a bunch of them from the office. Got to bring them back. Get some free most. Pain, back pain, shoulder pain, headaches. Chances are you'd benefit from chiropractic care. Most people benefit from chiropractic care because chiropractic care tries to get to the cause of your problems and not just cover up the symptoms. If you're ready to get well, I want you to go to my website, drjoe.com, or call 844-44-DR-JOE and make an appointment for you, your friends, and your family today. We have offices in Marietta, Duluth, and Stockbridge. Make an appointment today so we can help get you well and keep you well. The preeminent leader in healthcare, Dr. Joe Esposito, is on 95.5 WSB, Atlanta's News and Talk. Hey, Dr. Joe here. So glad you're there. Talking today about meat. Hot topic, man. Social media is lighting up. Uh, gosh, you only have two more segments. Got to cover pork, got to cover fish. Uh, pork, how about in a nutshell? Don't eat it. Very simple. Uh, when Moses wrote Leviticus, now I don't know when that was, but it was a long time ago. So what Leviticus is, it's in the Old Testament, and what Moses, when he wrote Leviticus, was basically guidelines on how to live your life. It wasn't so much religion-based, uh, but it was these are the guidelines you should do uh, to stay healthy. And he talked about uh, hygiene, and he talked about food, of course. And he said if you're going to eat animal products, it'd have to have a cloven hoof and cud chewing, which means it, it eats grass and grains. Uh, you don't want to eat the scavengers. And pork is a scavenger. It's the most widely eaten meat in the world. Up to 38% of all meat production in the world is pork. And a little story for you. A couple of years ago, I got invited to Cuba. Uh, the Cuban Olympic team invited me and my friend Tom, who's a my old college roommate, actually. He's the president of the North Carolina Chiropractic Association. Uh, and he works with the U.S. Olympic team, the, runner, the runners in the Olympic team. Uh, an amazing doctor and a great guy and one of my best friends in the world. And so he and I got invited to Cuba to do some consulting with the Cuban Olympic team. So it was quite an honor. I had to get visas from the government and everything. We flew into Havana. And it was interesting because we met with the dignitaries, the, the, like the, the, the big wigs. We met, every, we met with everybody but Castro. We met with Castro's personal physician. We met with the Olympic team, the gold medalists. And it was really, I mean, we, we were like big shots there. They had a guide follow us around, make sure we weren't spies. Um, but it was really cool. After a couple of days, he realized that we weren't spies. We were just two guys hanging out. So he kind of loosened up and we had some fun. And um, it was funny because the first meeting we had, they put out, uh, bits of ham as a snack in the meeting. 
So I didn't eat any, and that was cool because it was just a snack and everything. And then we had dinner. We had this dinner, and it was this, this, oh, the, the, the higher up, the, like I said, Castro's personal physician, Dr. Grande, Dr. Grande Grande, that was his name. And um, we all sat around, and we had dinner, and they bring out steak. Now, in Cuba, there's not a lot of cows. And if you kill a cow, eight years in prison. So cows are, you know, really important over there. Um, and so if, to be served steak is a really, really high, high honor. And I felt so bad because I don't eat meat. Tom doesn't eat meat. And they put it in front of us, and Tom did eat it. He, he, he showed more respect than I did. And I kind of cut it up and played with it and ate the vegetables and stuff and sent it back to the kitchen. I'm sure the guy in the kitchen was like, yes, steak, woo And it was so awkward. But Tom said, too, it tasted different because they don't use all the steroids and hormones and chemicals. And uh, he said it tasted different. It tasted like it had flavor to it. It wasn't just chewy stuff. Um, but pork, they serve it everywhere, especially in Cuba. Because And the reason uh, they serve it in places is because uh, pigs are scavengers. And like Moses said in the Bible, you don't want to eat um, uh, pork and shellfish because they're the scavengers. Cloven hood, c- hood, cloven hooved, cud chewing animals. And we get to fish. I'll try to refer back to Leviticus as well. Um, they're dirty animals. They'll eat pretty much anything. Now, a friend of mine, Johnny Rizzo, uh, very famous makeup artist. He's won Emmys, and he worked on a show called Deadwood. And this is when I started really seeing the impact of pigs. Um, and Deadwood uh, was a HBO show. And what they would do in Deadwood, it was kind of like this Wild West town. And if they shot somebody or killed them, instead of burying them, if they were the bad guys, they just threw them into the pig pen. And the pigs ate them. And I said to Johnny, is that true? He said, yeah, this, play, this, this show is really authentic. And even back in 2012, a farmer went out to feed his pigs and never came back. The pigs actually killed him and ate him. Well, they probably knocked him over and killed him. I don't know if they, they killed him purposely. Um, so that's pretty gross. But pork, not, not the thing you want to eat. And pigs can't sweat. They don't have sweat glands. That's why they roll around in the mud. They're actually very clean animals. They'd much rather be in water if they could. And they're very intelligent animals. They have very big brains. Um, so they don't sweat. So if you don't sweat, a lot of toxic buildup can occur in the body, and that can get into the meat. So pork, going all the way back to the Bible, um, not a good choice. And uh, it's still now they've they've changed it. You used to have to cook pork all the way because of trichinosis. Now they're saying you don't have to cook it. Trichinosis has been wiped out. But there's still a lot of viruses and parasites that can live in the meat. So any kind of meat, if you're going to eat it, I do recommend you cook it thoroughly because you may get the parasites and the viruses that are in there. All right, a lot more to talk about. Let's t- t- start taking some calls, though. 844-44-DR-JOE. 844-44-DRJOE is the number here at the studio. John, how can we make your day better? Yeah, I uh, had a friend who had his gallbladder removed in December. Yep. While they, while they were in there, they found the growth in his duodenum or duodenum, well, however yeah. you say it. Sure. So they went back and did the whipple. Yes. He went from 220 to below 150. Sure. Uh, he went, he had diarrhea, mm-hmm. then it turned to constipation. Yep. He's in the hospital now trying to figure out if he can get help. Do you, do you have any suggestions, diet wise? Or? Yeah, when you do the Whipple uh, procedure, they remove the gallbladder and they remove a piece of the duodenum. Sometimes they remove a piece of the pancreas. And the problem with that is you don't have uh, the organs that break down food and a piece of the colon where you absorb the nutrients. And yeah, that's I think a. 30 or 40 percent of his pancreas. Yeah, and so now the pancreas produces insulin, but also produces amylase, protease, and lipase, which broke down carbohydrates, fats, and proteins. That's a big issue, and that's why pancreatic cancer is so deadly because you can't digest your food and you, and you starve. So what I would suggest for him is easy to absorb nutrients. So find out what fruits and vegetables he can eat. Raw might give him diarrhea, so he may have to try some cooked ones first. I would definitely stay away from hard-to-digest food like meats and dairy products. He's got to avoid those at all costs. Um, Supplement-wise, Dr. Joe's Super Greens and Dr. Joe's Essential Source, which I think everybody should take, especially people that have absorption issues, and then digestive enzymes. you got to replace what the pancreas can't make anymore and what the gallbladder can't make. So on the website, we have Dr. Joe's Digestive Enzymes. I would get them that as well. So if, as a friend, John, I would get them Super Greens, Essential Source, and Digestive Enzymes, um, and then... Because they're going to try to get him to, you know, they'll, they'll give him junky food to try to get him to gain weight. Probably not a good idea. If he can eat nuts, I'd recommend nuts and seeds. Uh, avocados would be good for him. And see what he can tolerate because everybody's different when they have the Whipple procedure. Yeah. Yeah, it's tough for him. I appreciate it. All right, my friend. Anything else you need, you let me know. Okay, John? Thank you. Thanks so much. All right, folks. I'll uh, take some more calls. 844-44-DR-JOE. Jamie, how can we make your day better? Hey, doctor. How you doing there? I'm well. 
I have a quick question. If I take two of those distemperment pills I give the cat and I put in my wife's coffee, would that make a purr and be nice to me? <laughs> she might start chasing around if you give her catnip, too, so see what happens. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, here's, here's what I'm asking. I, I was reading this article that said that as men get older and they start putting up weight, weight around the waist, Yes. And it starts decreasing testosterone and it and it increases estrogen. Is that true? Correct. Fat. We, really? When I went to school 100 years ago, we thought that fat was just a blob. Now it turns out that a fat is a living, breathing organ, and it becomes an endocrine organ, which means it makes its own hormones, and fat produces estrogen. Estrogen causes you to lay down fat, which then produces estrogen. So, oh, at, yes, the, yeah, so the fat— is, are, is, that, is that we have so much uh, uh, rate of ED uh, as, as before in the past? I believe that is absolutely correct, and sperm count— you know, our sperm count, our generation is less than 50 percent of what our grandparents were, grandfathers. So wow. sperm count is plummeting. Uh, erectile dysfunction is huge. Um, it's a big issue. And, and if you go to our website, we did a show on male health, men's health. If you type that into the website, we did a whole show on that. Um, so, yeah, fat produces estrogen. So it's another reason we don't want to be fat because it produces estrogen. Estrogen is a growth hormone, can cause abnormal cell growth, which can lead to cancer as well. So another Is that why every full moon I get kind of antsy? That could well. That's a whole other story we have to do on full moons. But yeah, I would def yeah, you're absolutely right, though, Jamie. That is correct. So I'd Thank recommend you. Dr. Thank Joe's Supergreen's Essential Source. We have something called Dr. Joe's Hormone Support for Men. So as we get older, I take Dr. Joe's Men's Hormone really? Support and Dr. Joe's Adrenal Support. And that helps balance out the hormones. Web, right? Yeah, it's on the web, drjoe.com. Okay, I'll definitely look into it. Thank Thanks, you very much. Thanks, Jamie. If you have any other questions, folks, you can always send them to the website, drjoe.com. Right now, we have one more segment, 844-44-DR-JOE. If you have questions, the website, drjoe.com. I'm Dr. Joe Esposito. Don't go anywhere. Be right back. Healing the world, one call at a time. I'm Dr. Joe Esposito. is on 95.5 WSB, Atlantis News and Talk. Hey, folks, Dr. Joe here. So glad you're with us. Can you believe... This is the last segment of the show. It goes so fast. This is unbelievable. Hey, listen, I know this show, uh, a lot of you will be listening to this after this happens, but next week we're going to do a live event in, in Atlanta. Uh, we need 25 people. Uh, we're going to give out 25 tickets. Uh, people will get two tickets to the event. Uh, it's going to be next Wednesday night uh, here in Atlanta. Uh, to sign up, go to our website, drjoe.com. It's, it's on the website. It'll pop up and everything. Uh, we'll send you a push alert if you can't figure it out. But uh, send, us your, send us your email address. We'll get you on the list, and we're going to pick 25 people randomly. Computer's going to generate it. Um, and you're going to, you and a guest, we're going to have catered. We're going to have it catered by a vegan restaurant here in Atlanta. And it's going to be a live event. We're going to have TV cameras there and everything. Love to have you come out. And do me a favor. Sign up. Get all your friends to sign up because if we can get a big response, which we're already getting a big response, but if we get a bigger response, the bosses here at the station will say, all right, this is something we might want to do in the future on a regular basis. So my boss said, let's try it once. We'll see what happens. So I need you, the listeners, to show Pete how great this is um, and, and Drew how wonderful it is so that we can do more of it. So go to the website, drjoe.com, and sign up, and hopefully we'll be seeing you Next week, it's not the coming week, but the week after, um, here at the studio. It's a lot of fun. And I'll even buy you dinner. How about that? All right, so we're talking about animal products today. Let's take a – we got two more callers. I'll take those, and then we've got to cover fish here. So uh, who's been holding the longest? Deborah, how can we make your day better? Okay. Uh, I have high eye pressure from glaucoma. Yes. My left eye, the pressure stays about 40. Yep. And it seems to be uncontrollable. Yeah, can some kind of adjustment be done to help that come down? Well, the chiropractic care, we'd open up the nerve and blood supply into the eye. So the answer is maybe. Then we got to get you on a good diet because there's a reason why pressure builds up inside the eye. It's usually, well, it's almost always a circulatory issue. And so we got to look at what's causing the circulation issues. Is it clogged arteries? Um, maybe we get you on Dr. Joe's nitric oxide support. Nitric oxide opens up the blood vessels and drops the pressure. Um, we got to get the uh, supply, blood supply going there. We've got to get the nutrients up there as well so the body can heal. And as we get older, our enzyme levels drop. So I would probably recommend Dr. Joe's digestive enzymes, Dr. Joe's nitric oxide support, super greens, an essential source, and then chiropractic to try to open up the nerve and blood supply. So the answer is maybe. I can never make promises, but if you do nothing, it's only going to get worse. So I think you should come see us, and let's see if we can get that fixed for you. Okay? Okay. All right, All Deborah. Right. Thank look for, you. Look forward to seeing you. And, folks, all the supplements we talk about are on the website, drjoe.com. Uh, well over 1,000 hours of podcasts there. If you have questions, send them to me through the website. Um, the supplements you could always pick up at our offices in Marietta, Duluth, and Stockbridge, and that will just save you shipping as well. 
And if you've ever been in a car accident, ever, if the car was damaged, you were damaged. You need to come see us right away. Every time I say this, we get a flood of people coming in, and they say, I never thought I was in a car accident that I should get checked. Get checked. If there's nothing wrong, we tell you there's nothing wrong. I will tell you this, in 35 years, anyone who's been in a car accident never had nothing wrong. So come see us, your friends, your family, and you right away. Stop suffering needlessly. Biggest complaint I get, why didn't I do this sooner? So if you have pain, if you have digestive issues, just come see us, get it over with, come see us, get well, move on with your life. And you can do that on the website, drjoe.com, or the number during business hours is 844-44-DR-JOE. Carol, how can we make your day better? Hi, uh, first time caller, and it's my pleasure to speak with you. Oh, what an honor. Um, I have Crohn's, and so I was wondering if there is a specific protocol that you would give for all Crohn's sufferers. Is it individual? I do eat a very healthy diet, Mm -hmm. and um, I stay mostly with vegetables and fruits, but, you know, lean Mm meats, organic, uh, and I exercise. But what what can you suggest? Well, definitely stay away from wheat as well. Um, Yes, I do. I do. Perfect. Wheat, barley, and rye, because they have a, a type of gluten in them that can cause an inflammatory reaction. And the thing that's always missing in Crohn's treatments is you got to check the nerves in the low back. The nerves in the low back okay. control the colon, the sex organs, and the bladder. So by adjusting that area, we can open up the nerve and blood supply into the digestive system. And in many cases, that is the missing link for Crohn's patients because it sounds like you're doing everything else right, which is awesome. Right. I'd also say right. stay away from dairy products, too, because dairy has casein in it that can cause an inflammatory reaction in the gut as well. So okay. we do that, right. and then you got to get on easy to digest foods, something raw at every meal, like you said, vegetables, because the enzymes have to, the stomach has to break the proteins into amino acids, the pancreas has to break down fats, carbohydrates, and proteins. So by the time it gets into the lower part of the bowels, it doesn't rot and cause an inflammatory reaction. Correct. So super okay. green, super green is an right. essential source. Um, so that would be the general protocol. We may even show you some massage techniques where you can massage the colon to get any spasms that are in there out. Um, but mm-hmm. then when you come into the office, then we would customize a plan because that's ge- – I can only give you general advice on, on, on the phone. Um, but Certainly. then we'd customize it when you come see us. So I'd, I'd recommend you come uh, see us, and hopefully that's the answer you're looking for. Okay. Thank you so much. I appreciate this information. Well, thanks for the call, Carol. We appreciate that. And, folks, uh, um, if you have any questions, if we didn't get you on the air, just go to website, drjoe.com. And when you're there – and, again, I know this show is going to be you know uh, saved forever, but – not this coming week, but the following week, we're going to have a live event in the Atlanta area uh, at the WSB Studios in Atlanta. We're going to have a live event. It's called the Live Lounge. Register for that. We're going to randomly pick 25 names, and you will get two tickets to come see us. With I'm going to buy dinner and everything for every. I'm not. WSB is going to buy dinner. Um, and it's going to be a live lounge. We have TV cameras there and everything. It's a lot of fun. And we're going to be talking about things that happen to you as you get older and things that you need to do now to prevent problems getting older. Because every single day we see patients in our offices – And they say, Dr. Joe, I've got these health issues. I don't know what to do about them. And when I tell them, they say, yes, exactly. When I was 20, 30, 40, whatever it was, I had these problems. All right, fish real quick. If you're going to eat fish, I recommend uh, wild-caught fish. If you're doing farm-raised fish, I'd strongly advise you stop doing that right away. The omega-3 levels are not what you think they are. If they're farm-raised fish, the fish get uh, uh, omega-3s from eating smaller fish who eat algae. And if they're farm-raised fish, they never get to eat smaller fish. In many cases, they just eat the algae. They eat corn and soy. Not a good idea. Uh, Some fish have to be fed other uh, fish. But uh, if they are, many times it's anchovies or herring that they feed them. Those fish might have higher levels of omega-3s because they're eating other fish who ate the algae. But what's happening is we're destroying our supplies of smaller fish, the herring and the uh, anchovies, because we're feeding it to these farm-raised fish. If you're looking for an omega-3 supplement on the website, drjoe.com, we have Dr. Joe's Vegan Omega-3. It's the one I take every single day. Uh, If you are vegan, I do strongly recommend you take an omega-3 fatty acid because omega-3s come from animal products or from algae. And if you're not eating animal products, chances are you're not eating algae either. You just need to get the omega-3s. So if you're going to eat fish, wild-caught fish only. Folks, time's up. I'm Dr. Joe Esposito. My website, drjoe.com. Over 1,000 hours of podcast there. Register for our event coming up in a week and a half. Um, uh, so that you can come, come to the studio live. It's a lot of fun. If you have neck pain, back pain, shoulder pain, numbness, tingling, stop suffering. Just go to our website, drjoe.com. Make an appointment. We have offices in Marietta, Duluth, and Stockbridge. We work with almost every insurance company out there. If you've ever been in a car accident, come see us. Folks, we want to get you well and keep you well. I'm Dr. Joe Esposito. Get you next time. If you are struggling, all right. So-